Welcome back and a happy new year. Today we are going to be taking a quick look at the J7D Premium for rank 7 in the Chinese tech tree. And it's a little bit underpowered at 11.0 because the flight performance is only slightly better than the MiG-21MF. It's slightly lighter with a better engine, but at the end it's still worse than the SMT which is 10.3. And you will notice this definitely in the acceleration as well as the sustainability at super low speeds. And it's very very noticeable because you are a delta wing and you are going to be bleeding speed quite quickly. So if you have to compare this between the J7E for example, the MiG-21 BIS or the, even the MiG-21 SMT, this is definitely lacking quite a bit. So why is it still at 11.0? It has to have something over the MiG-21 other than of course the engine power because it has a deficit there so where does it make up well it makes up in the fact that it has pl5s as well as pl7s the pl5s we all know these from the chinese tech tree they are basically minecraft arrows they are extremely quick they accelerate stupendously fast they don't turn the best but are still agile enough to basically hit everyone and they don't burn that long they go silent for very long and they can kind of be used as like an ambush weapon they are very prone to being flared, however. And then secondly, we have the PL7. Now, if you have flown anything in the French tech tree, you know these by the name of Magic Wands. Very strong missiles. I think the PL5s in about 80 to 90% of the cases are going to be better. But the PL7s do have the advantage here that they can kind of ignore flares if you get close to someone directly on their six. Because PL5s are very flare hungry. And the PL7s might actually push right through and just kill them. That's exactly exactly what happened today. So I'll have a perfect example for you in that regard. So do I think that this thing is worth your money? Now I'm going to say no. For the simple reason that this airframe is pretty bad. And if you want to get it for the PL5s which are great missiles. Then you have this plane right here which is very very similar. It has a better engine. It has better wings. It has the same missiles. And the gun is a little bit hit or miss. I kind of prefer the water pistol of the J7D. But that's preference too. At least this thing hits quite hard. But what I recommend you to do here is actually get the A5C. It's going to be cheaper. And you're going to be able to grind all the way up until like rank 7. And then Talisman the J7. You're going to have a much better time in terms of flyability. The A5C is a much better grinder. And it's much more consistent. And also keep in mind when you crew this thing. And I'll show you right here. I'll show you how bad it actually is. Because you might not be aware of this. You're going to crew it. You're going to put it on your, your crew. Okay, that's only 10,000, right? And then you try to do this and it's 1.5 million. And as you see right here, yes, it's still 108. I had about 130 about two weeks ago. I had to crew all these planes and now I'm simply, I'm just slowly but surely going broke. Sure, I still have 1 million or 100 million. It's plenty. I'm not saying I'm going broke anytime soon. But keep in mind, if you are struggling with SL... These planes might run you out a little bit. And the repair cost is pretty cheap. Keep in mind, yes, the reward is worse because it's a test drive. But the SL multiplier is just absolutely garbage for a tier 7. Some rank 4 planes have a higher multiplier than this. But I think that the A5C is going to be a much more consistent grinder. It's going to have much better results in the long term. And this plane is going to be much harder to power creep here. Because this is already in that BR range where when they add the next batch of planes, where it's going to be F-15 or whatever they're going to add, it's probably going to be at 12.0. Let's be honest here, people. It's not going to be higher than 12.0 at the very least. It's probably going to be 11.7 even. And then guess what? This thing is still going to get sucked up into that. The 10.0 the matchmaker is much better. And the A5C is just a much more relaxing grinder in basically every regard. And then this thing is a straight up upgrade over the J7D. Other than the fact that you cannot carry your one PL7. But that's essentially it. But before we get into the gameplay today. Thank you to all my YouTube members and my Patreons. And if you're looking to buy anything from the Gaijin store. And you want to get a cool decal with it. You can do it with my discount code down below. I get a cut. You get a decal. And you get a discount. Everybody wins. So how do I set up in this vehicle? Well it's a bit rough. It really depends on how the game plays out. And there is no real guideline to it. You just want to make sure. That you don't put yourself in bad positions in this thing. It's very very important that you do not get forced defensively at the start of the game. Because you are going to be shitting away all your speed very quickly. And you're not going to be getting it back very quickly. So you are going to be a massive sitting duck. The benefit is you are a delta wing. You pull a lot of AOA which is like the kind of drifting through the air. So you have the ability to kind of stamp on the elevator. Pull into a shot and get it off. 
The issue is you're gonna bleed a lot of speed. MiG-23 goes for us, he shoots a missile from quite far away, probably an R-24, we don't get RWR warning. So I turn into him, I try to not go too fast because I want to make sure that he does not get on my 6. One of the issues with a plane that doesn't hold its energy quite well, if you lose all your energy and the guy is behind you, you are a sitting duck and you are going to be completely boned. So I try to get behind him. So I cut my throttle a little bit. I don't need to go to 0% air brake or anything. I just need to get behind him. He makes a mistake. He turns into the wrong direction. I'm going to use a magic. Doesn't matter if he flares. That's going to eat him. If I use a PL5 there, I have to be a little bit more accurate. I have to aim it a little bit more because it isn't as maneuverable at those ranges. PL5 definitely could have hit there because he flared way too late. So that's not really the issue here. So we turn in. And I'm just trying to use the terrain so I have to dodge as little as possible so I can conserve as much of my speed as possible. Because I don't want to be maneuvering too much. Everyone finally gets past us. No one is turning around for us. So we go straight. We pick our speed back up and we just leave. We do not want to contest that area with the little speed that we had to one name. SU-22 however is doing a little bit of a relay race and the first SU-22 passes us. The second one thinks well now it's my turn. So how do we go about this? It depends what he does. It really just does. So I'm going to wait. I flare the missile. I kind of turn in. I do not want him dead on my 6. I want him in a little bit of an off angle. He takes a shot. He pulls lead on us. And because we are a Delta, we lose a lot of speed. We pull into the shot instantly. He is crit. He is useless. The Commissar doesn't like that. And if you're useless, you might as well be dead. So he sauces the SU-22. And then just leaves the area. Which is perfect for us. Because we can't really do anything here. If he had turned around for us... I would have done the exact same thing because I need to get my speed up a little bit. If I tried to force a turn after him, I would have been going like 500 by the time I get near him and then he just energy traps me. The MiG-23 luckily for us is being very very passive and he flies away way too far. I don't know why people are so scared of this thing, but hey, it suits me. I get some free breathing room. So we go head on with a MiG-29, middle of the map, very slow, stick the head on a little bit long but I want to make sure that he dies right there. We wingtip him, but he is not actually dead yet. So now we need to run away from the area again. MiG-23 coming in from the side, use the terrain. Missile just eats a tree. And again, we just continue flying straight. You want to maneuver as little as possible, or as little as you possibly need. So I drag along everyone. F-14 comes over the hill. They weren't aware of him, and he takes down two of them. Basically instantly, which is absolutely perfect. Now we have a MiG-29 on our 6, as well as the second MiG-29 that's over there. But he, is, he lost his wingtip. He will not be that much of a threat. So right now I'm going to try to go vertical. The MiG-29 will win the vertical. But because we lose so much speed and because we pull so much AOA, I should be able to basically instantly get on this guy's 6. As long as I don't go too vertical. You can see that I try to taper it off a little bit. Try to go a little bit horizontal. And in this kind of maneuver, I will also maintain a lot of my energy. Yes, I will bleed a lot of it. I will bleed a lot of my speed. But I will not waste a lot of energy. Because I'm going to be bleeding a lot of it very quickly anyway. I might as well put some of it into altitude. The MiG-29, however, is going to be accelerating away from us. Because he just holds his speed much better. Accelerates much better. And then I just start pre-flaring. Because I really do not like stalling out in front of a teammate that's actively shooting missiles at us. So now, MiG-29 is still engaged on us. I'm going to go horizontal here. I'm going to try to cut in behind him. And there we go. We are basically getting all the position that we need. And eventually we are going to get directly behind him. The issue is he actually breaks off. He still has a lot of speed. Look at the speed that he has. And he's just going to kind of do a little bit of a raid fight here. And he's just opening up the gap absolutely massively. F-14 comes in. And the MiG-29 now tries to start extending away. The thing is these missiles are kind of disgusting. And if you don't use flares... At these speeds, you're just going to eat it. He gets set on fire. We go RTB. We have two and a half minutes of fuel left. And not many countermeasures. F-14 thinks he needs to secure that kill despite him being on fire. So I just slap him with the dude. He doesn't get the kill for it. We do. And then we take back off. It is 2v1. Because, well, the F-14 landed and then decided he needs to leave. So right now I have a 2v1 on my hands against a MiG-27 as well as the MiG-29 that we shot the wingtip of earlier in the game. Now the MiG-21, even the MiG-21 bis, are all like planes that are fine in 1v1 scenarios. They can all somewhat win if you manage your speed, you manage your nose and you don't over pull on shots that you're not going to be receiving. The thing is, in a 2v1, you are instantly going to be left out to dry and you're not going to have a very great time. And the issue with the MiG-21 right now, the teams are atrocious, just like with the MiG-23 ML, just like with the MiG-29. And the main reason is, 
America does not have premiums at the 11.0 BR range. Of course, if they get fully up tiered, you might see an A6E. But in general, every team is filled with premiums except the American one. So if you get up tiered to 11.3, 11.7, which is essentially every game, then you are just going to be at a disadvantage from the get-go. The enemy is going to have a shitload of F-14s, which are all spaded because they've been in the game for a while. And then sprinkle in some F-16s here and there to absolutely ruin your day. If you're lucky, some of them are stock. But even then, they are very, very dangerous. And the MiG-21, or the J-7D, I should say, is a plane that really struggles with these kind of matchups because it just doesn't have the engine to compete. The MiG-21 BIS will struggle somewhat. You don't want to know how bad you'll struggle with this thing. So you really have to play it a bit as a support fighter. Do I recommend it? I don't know. It's not the best. It's not the fastest. It only goes 13 to 65 because that's the rip speed of most of the MiG-21 frames. And it's just, at least at this BR, and it's just not it. It's not a very good plane. It can be a decent grinder because you do have the 4 PL5s or the Magics, whatever you want to use. But be aware, the plane itself isn't great, only the missiles are. Speaking about the missiles, I switch over to the PL7. The MiG-27 is already crit. One kilometer, very close, full afterburner. I don't even have to look at him because I know the flares are not going to be full in that one. MiG-27 is down and now there's only the MiG-29 left. And this MiG-29 is going to make an absolute crucial mistake. And that's being scared of a J7 that's going 500 kilometers an hour. He goes quicker in a turn. And I will not be able to maintain that speed. I will not be able to accelerate very quickly. Sure, relatively speaking, in terms of all of War Thunder, the MiG-21 or the J7D still accelerates pretty fast. The thing is, against the MiG-29, which essentially accelerates like something like a Kefir, you're gonna have a little bit of an issue. The thing is, I do not understand what this MiG-29 was trying to do. He is absolutely petrified by the fact that I might have a magic or something. I don't know. Maybe John Cena stole his ice cream and he is just scared of this nation in general. I have honestly no clue. So what does he do? He hides behind the mountains and I'm just trying to find him right now. I at least have my radar turned. Also I know that my RWR or that his RWR will not pick me up. Which is a good start. So uh, how are we gonna go about this guy? Well first of all I need to find him. So I go over the mountains. I don't know that he knows where I am. Because I'm gonna be at a disadvantage anyway. I'm not gonna be... Pushing any kind of initiative. Unless of course he does exactly what he is going to end up doing. So I keep looking around. I suspect him to go towards the airfield. He actually didn't. So where can he be? I then notice a massive smokestack that is over there. It's a MiG-29. If it's off afterburner the MiG-29 makes this massive smokestack. Most planes do now. But the MiG-29 looks like an absolute chimney. It's a bit of a... Well compared to the other planes in this game. It's a bit of a meme. So I notice that he's over there. I notice that he's actually turning back in. So I'm going to hug these mountains. And hope that he gets spotted by something. Like a bot or anything else. And he does. So now we're going to hug this mountain a little bit more. I don't want to pull in too tightly. So I'm going to keep going straight for a little bit. And then the second I kind of guess where he's going to be. We turn in. And perfect clockwork. We get directly behind him. And all he needs to do now. Realistically. Is simply fly away. Now he goes vertical with his afterburner off and that's what I meant with the Minecraft arrows. At close range you need to kind of treat these things like rockets because you need to lead them into the next dimension. They're just too fast for their own good and they can't really track of the reel. I'll show you another one. I thought it was going to fly straight. He starts turning. Another missile misses and I'm not really too bothered because I'm just trying to fire them all off. If anything if it's just to keep pressure on him. Then he kind of flies straight and gives me a prime time PL5 kill. And if you're wondering what the more average experience is of this vehicle, well, I'll show you right here. We're about one minute or two-ish minutes into the game. We've taken off, we've afterburned until this point, and we reached around the map. And we are about to make our first, yes, our very first engagement of the game. And I want you to pay very close attention to the kill feed on the bottom right. We just lost two, and they lost one. Oh, we lost three now. And that's going to count up very, very quickly. It's very, very frustrating to fly a plane that isn't that great when it comes to performance. When this happens very, very often at this BR. Now, I haven't flown this vehicle particularly much. The thing is, I've flown this BR range because I've been recording footage for every new Rank 7 Premium. So I can give you guys a review. 
And it's just absolutely wild how bad these teams are if you are against only US. They just don't have any premiums. And this happens almost every game. And it's very, very annoying, especially if your plane isn't good. And even with the MiG-23 ML, I just couldn't get my wins in. These teams are absolutely unsalvageable. And right here we have four or five guys on the six. And sure, I can climb to orbit and then like come down and save the match, quote unquote. But by the time I reach the middle of the map, the game has already been decided. And as you see, there's no active players. And we have 20 minutes and 15 seconds left. And that means that's not almost 5 minutes in game time. That's 5 minutes from the second we get pulled into the queue. Because that timer starts ticking down the second the map starts loading. Then you get the loading screen. Then you get the spawn in delay. Then you get the takeoff and the reach until the middle of the map. That took 5 minutes. All of it together. And the funny thing is, that wasn't even the fastest one I've gotten all week. So, it's pretty painful. Is it a good grinder? I can't really recommend it. I would say get the A5C, Talisman the J7E, and you're going to be in a much better spot. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one, which is going to be tomorrow or the day after.